Okay, ready to go. Then, hello and welcome to the ABAP Cloud in Action keynote session. And uh, welcome to, to the ABAP Conf, also from SAP side. My name is Marcel Hermans, and with me is Volker Dres. We are from the ABAP platform team. And we have also Guru, Guru Bayraman, with us, who is from the S4 HANA application space. And I'm also very happy to have Guru on board because he will show us today how the real SAP sales orders consuming the newest technologies we provide from the other platform side. Click. So some technical problems. So uh, the agenda for today is shortly we will introduce um, our cloud, but uh, only very short. And then we will have a look how um, the sales order is um, applying the newest ABAP cloud features. So for example, wrap um, features, but also other features which we offer in the ABAP cloud space. And at the end, um, Volker and me, we will give a rough overview about the, um, about the roadmap and um, the different areas where we invest in ABAP cloud. And um, we will also show some nice cool demos with the newest stuff we are currently working on. So, but what is ABAP cloud? First of all, we keep that very short. ABAP Cloud is the development model to build cloud-ready apps, services, and extensions. And there are certain words which are very important. So first of all, it's a development model. That means we are not providing different technologies where you decide which to use, how to use them, but it's a real development model that, that describes how to use all the different technologies together to reach um, out to a, an app or a service or an extension. And of course, if you're using ABAP Cloud, including REP, then you are building cloud-ready applications. Cloud-ready means they would run also in the cloud, but they don't have to run in the cloud. They can also run in a different environment, for example, on-premise. So, and if you are using our cloud, of course, we are compliant to the clean core principles. And so you are, if you are using that, and it comes with all the deployment options which we have in the ABAP stack. So it comes with Steambank, SubBTP, ABAP environment. It comes with S4HANA in the private cloud, in the public cloud, and of course, also on-premise. So that means we have the classic ABAP development model, which is available in the um, premise world, the classic premise world, and in S4HANA private cloud, of course. But we um, recommend to use for further development, for future development, the ABAP cloud development model, which is available in all the different deployment options. So for example, in Steampunk, so which is uh, the ABAP platform in, in the cloud without um, application layers on top, um, we are only able to use ABAP Cloud for certain reasons, because we are in the cloud, we need to be cloud ready, and classic ABAP is, because of 30, 40 years history, not completely cloud ready, so therefore we have to provide um, this um, ABAP Cloud development. But is it completely new? Of course not. It contains all the innovations which we had in the last um, decade. So for example, first of all, ADT, the ABAP development tools in Eclipse. And of course, also all the technologies like ABAP object orientation, um, ABAP unit, and uh, things like that. And with SAP S4 HANA, we of course also support um, HANA as a database, Fury as the UI technology on top. We are supporting cloud development, and this all, of course also includes the key user extensibility. And with Steampunk, we introduced further, um, further um, innovations, for example, a cloud-ready extension model. And of course, we also provided REP, the ABAP RESTful Application Proving. And this is uh, also a huge part of ABAP Cloud, focusing on the transaction aspect of applications. So how can I bring my database in an editable way to a Fury application, for example? How can I base, uh, build web APIs? But of course, a complete development model contains way more than transaction applications. And here we can see that um, with SAP as far in our cloud ABAP environment, we um, introduced also the same concepts which we have in Steampunk for SAP as for HANA. So stable APIs, um, not only in tech from technology side, but also from the application space. So and all that shapes ABAP Cloud. And what's in exactly, we will see in a second. So first of all, if you want to create applications, it always starts with database tables. And these database tables can be used to create, for example, business objects um, or to uh, create analytical, analytical models, analytical providers, and to expose them in an end user, user interface. So for example, via the OData protocol or via the INA protocol to Fury or to analytical clients. But not everything is about 
end users. It's about UI. It's about human to machine uh, communication. Sometimes we also, of course, need machine to machine communication, integration scenarios. And therefore, for us, OData is also a way to create web APIs, integration services. But we also have events, if it's not a point to point communication, but more broadcast, an event driven um, um, communication protocol. And we also support HTTP, RVC, and other protocols. Also, very important for us, SQL data replication or data integration scenarios. And of course, as usual in ABAP, we not do not only focus on the core and application development, but we also provide the ecosystem, the environment. For example, reuse services we provide, which are also partly natively integrated into the programming model. And uh, this is also something where we are currently still um, working on, but we will um, integrate them more and more to have a seamless development model, which um, we can provide to you. And the typical built-in qualities we know from the ABAP, we call them sometimes the ABAP assets, like can I um, do lifecycle management? How can I do the unit testing? Um, how can I do business configuration? All that is of course also included in ABAP Cloud and even improved because in the cloud, we have much more to cover, especially in the space of security, IAM, um, extensibility, cloud readiness. And last but not least, we also need to cover the lifecycle management and tooling aspects. So, and now let's have a look. How does this real look like in the SAP sales order? So I hand over to Guru. Guru, thank you and welcome. Uh, so you click, Marcel? I yeah. click, yes, sir. Okay. So we are in a, a hybrid environment, online audience, but we are on site. So it's also a little uh, hybrid. So let's see, we get through uh, seamlessly. So firstly, thanks uh, to ABAP uh, conference team and ABAP platform for giving us opportunity uh, to show how we have gone through our journey with uh, RAP, internal word, but ABAP cloud enablement for sales order. As you know, sales order is one of the core objects of our ERP, and uh, it is uh, we are very powerful. And because we are highly extensible, which comes with a huge uh, requirement that you should also be compatible because there are huge investments from our customers into our stack. So all this we should consider. But on the other hand, the technology is always moving, and technology is offering new features, so we have to adapt. So we need to balance how we can get, and uh, we were very nervous, can we catch up, can we meet the requirements and so on. And we have invested quite a lot, and during my talk, you will see how we did it. So let's start with a little history. So I think most of the audience know whoever has touched SAP, the one of the most famous module pools, SAP MB45A. So this is where the business logic of sales order resides. It's not only sales order that also I will touch, it is also for sales quotation, contracts, credit memo requests, debit memo requests, scheduling agreements. So there are huge bunch of business objects in the context of sales, which is happening in SAP MV45A. And the user interface, which we had then VA01, we also call internally very advanced 01. Yeah. <laughs> it's highly advanced. You can do many things. And now we have to simplify it for our cloud, yeah, which is uh, theory. Now, before Let's come to theory. What happened in 90s, 2000s, uh, the UI technology kept on changing. So we had, uh, there were uh, WebDIN Pro, there were APIs which were requested and so on. So we had a group of people who knew SAP MV45 quite well, and they luckily enabled the so-called business abstraction layer or the decoupling layer, which is our internal API layer, which is goal, which is written here, but actually this it is as a successor of Lord, if someone knows CRM, yeah. Now, the point is, we have goal. So why do you want trap? Yeah, this is a very important question. Uh, actually, goal is very internal, and it is uh, having its own proprietary signatures and so on. ABA platform is now offering a unified way how business objects can be accessed. So a developer, a very important aspect, a developer who knows how to consume sales order, at least that syntactically knows how to consume purchase order. Of course, he needs a business knowledge, but from a syntactical point of view, ABAP platform has unified the signature and RAP is really supporting us. The second biggest aspect, we as application team had to 
cope up with all technical protocol requirements as you see goal has to understand soap goal has to understand the uh, events goal has to understand other stuff this is not our area of strength yeah we want to leave it to the technology that application team concentrates on application code that we will write the business logic and technology takes care to write the necessary adapters yeah so these are the two main reasons for our big motivation to move to rap and now once we move to rap now we come to the channel specific topics right we have ui we have built a theory ui based on our business object we have released odata api based on this business object to be formally correct will be released in the upcoming 2402 release and interestingly what rap also offers is the so called business object interface apis these are the apis which can be consumed on stack in your s4 hana system let it be on premise or cloud and whatever you code there is sure upgrade safe because as marcel said we can code only release that we can access only release artifacts and you can not use illegal statements so this means the code what you write using the pass apis and if the artifact is above language 5 or above cloud enabled then by definition if it works once in theory it should work forever yeah i hope also it works forever yeah and then you do not have to think about upgrades so i mean there is also one more integration pattern which is called event based integration so we have business events which are published in the event mesh which can be consumed for other foreign applications or we also have a local event which is possible which i will show in a part of the demo yeah so uh, as you see what trap has done for us is we have written once the business object we have consume the the other channels are uh, abstractions for us we do not have business logic written again and again but the business logic still lies in sap mv45a we are going to the same business logic wrap is a technical enabler layer for us to go there and as you see the most important one below uh, we want to reuse our uh, assets or not only our assets customer assets so our wrap bo is a unmanaged query where we delegate the calls to our legacy or not legacy it is still the active business uh, logic yeah so this is about the big picture of sales order i think uh, we are done with this slide right Yes. Enterprise switch was one more point. Yeah, yeah, which is upcoming. Sorry, I exactly that is the reason I forgot because we did not develop it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, RAP will be offering also enterprise search based on uh, uh, enterprise search models based on CDS or RAPs. Uh, we have not yet enabled it, but soon we will also be part of this. Yeah. Yes. So we'll be part of our cloud. So um, Guru, we'll be very happy to see your demo right now. Yes. And um, yeah, I think um, Guru explained well. um how this all fits together more or less from from an application point of view of course um yeah um, guru is a very passionate uh, ambitious developer who is um not 100% neutral but um let's see um we will see that in the coding guru are you sharing already i am not at sharing so i i will start sharing my screen perfect so thank you guru for this introduction and now we will see the sales order live okay are you I hope the audience can see the screen. Good. Okay. So, uh, this is what I just want to take some moments to explain some artifacts. What is there? So, this is the R sales order TP, which is our core BO, which is enabled once. And here you can see in the outline what are the entities which are supported in our BO at this moment. Uh, as I said, uh, sales order is a huge business object, so everything cannot be done overnight. now we are already into 3 years into it but we are in the process of enabling uh, business uh, or entities on the order of priority so currently sales order has the root it has the item it has a billing plan it has uh, even under item you have partners you have pricing element text and so on so we are good we are good enough but there is we know there is some stuff to do what you also see in the outline is wrap offers by default all these uh, crud operations and additionally we also have actions which are possible like set billing block or remove billing block these are these are the quick actions which can be consumed in the theory wise now uh, once we have this core bo 
Then the other objects are just projections. So you here you see uh, iSales.tp, which is our internal pass API, uh, or the RAP business interface, which is called. Or uh, here you have the A sales order two, uh, which is our O data API, or and the C sales order manage. So now uh, let me start the Fiori UI. I have consciously set a breakpoint in price fin doom. This should already give you the name. Should give you already it is legacy. Yeah, it's not pricing, but price fin doom, uh, which is German. Uh, and uh, let me prove that uh, whatever I'm saying is also the truth. Yeah, I hope the demo works. It's real. It's 2402 live system. Uh, it worked today morning 30 times. I hope the 31st time now it works. So now I'm trying to create a sales order. So I enter the customer ID. I say some about, oh, sorry, I cannot afford to make a mistake here. 2023. 20, now I go and add uh, item. So before adding the item, I will also explain. So what uh, in this part of the demo I have enhanced, you have to now imagine I am a customer developer. I have enhanced the sales order process using cloud stable possibilities, cloud above cloud possibilities. And here you see a button called use gift card. And this button is now disabled because the value is zero of the sales order at this point of time because I have just entered the customer. There is no value, so I cannot use a gift card. And now I enter the first product, which is, let's say, a air compressor. And now I say I want one piece and I press enter. Now the breakpoint should hit and it hits. So this is price findung. I again repeat. And now here you see this is our stack. So here you see the Fiori UI, which is calling the HTTP request. It's a OData request. From OData, we come to a Sardin. It's called Service Adaptation Definition Language, which is also part of the RAP layer. So now you see uh, OData is calling the Sardin and the RAP, and the RAP is delegating to sales order. Remember, I said we are not only sales order. SAP MV45A is more than sales order. So we have an abstraction layer called sales document. And then it goes to goal, which I mentioned, it is our decoupling layer. And then we come to our most heart of our core price window. And now I just execute, run the breakpoint. The breakpoint is done. Uh, so hopefully now we should see the price. Uh, so if I go to the top, uh, you can see that uh, the price is 2,499 2 euros. Now you see the button got enabled. This means even as a customer, I am able to influence the behavior of a button, means uh, action, when it should be enabled and when it should be disabled. And now I go and use the gift card. Now, before I use the gift card, I want to show you what is a gift card. As I said, gift card is an extension artifact completely created by customer. It does not exist in S4HANA. So we have a own business object called gift card. And we have used a uh, few elements. Uh, I have to reorganize the screen. Exactly. Okay. So here you see uh, there is there are two gift cards in the system. One is hundred dollars, another is fifty dollars. And now you see if I just click go, the usage counter. How many times this gift card is used in a sales order is twenty one, and the fifty dollars is number three. So the demo which I will show you is when a gift card is used in the sales order, the number of usage or the usage counter should increase. That is one part of the demo. And second part is we will use the above cloud API to send the mail to the customer for whom we create the order. So this is completely extension based and I will come to it now. So now I assign 100 euros to this uh, order, uh, dollars to this order. And once I use the gift card, what you see is 2,499 became 2,399. And whoever knows sales order, you cannot simply reduce number 100 in the top. It is much more than that. Uh, the pricing actually runs. And here you can see uh, what we actually do is we create a discount of 100 euros because it's SAP, yeah? It's financial accounting should be correct. We cannot simply reduce 100 somewhere. So the pricing runs and we give a uh, hundred this hundred dollars discount and because of this the price changes now now that i have a sales order item with this uh, uh 
with sales order with the gift card used as you see the gift card amount is also here now let me go and create this order uh, struggling with this uh, uh, screen <laughs> it zooms just one second yeah so here you can see there is a create button so now i am saving this order so the moment i save the order i said two things should happen the first thing is the usage counter should increase. Let's see whether it has increased. So it was 21 and now it is 22. So the usage counter increased to 22 and I said we should get a mail. Let's see if we got a mail. Uh, also here with the tabs. Okay, so here is the mailbox. Okay, so there is a mail which we got $400 for the order 53018 and the order is 53018. So whatever I did is now real. So luckily the demo worked for the 31st time. <laughs> so 53018 is the order I created for which the customer of this order, which is the Forge United, got a mail saying that the gift card is used. Now, what did I do for this to happen? Uh, maybe I go into the above mode. And now if you see here, uh, I have some uh, artifacts which are open. So maybe I will touch only the important artifacts. So what we have done is we have enhanced the standard sales order. Uh, maybe I make it full screen, exactly. So what we have enhanced is we have enhanced the I sales order TP, which is the standard sales order. And we have introduced a new action, which is use gift card. Because when the gift card is used, then the 100 euros, $100 should be subtracted. What is new in 2023 is, I think, side effects is new in 2023. I'm not sure, Marcel will say, but definitely line number 16 is new. Uh, this is definitely coming in 2023. So what we have done is we have defined our own e event, which is a derived event or it's called officially managed event. So whenever sales order gets created, we want to send a mail to the customer, but that's not the story. Only when the gift card is used. Yeah. So how to how to this statement just says whenever sales order is created, say this event has to be raised, but that is not true. Only when gift card is also assigned. So for this, what you can do is you can use that uh, payload parameter structure of the event, and here we have a bad condition which says the gift card is not initial. So this means when the sales order is created and gift card is assigned, then the event will be raised. And now let's see what happens in the event. In the event, uh, in the event handler, when it is redeemed, so this means the event has raised, what we have to do, we have to do only two things. The first thing is we have to increase the number of the usage counter. So this is happening in a modify. So this is a transactional state. Re Marcel also said uh, it is very important. Rap have, we have to ensure transactional consistency. And Rap gave a wonderful feature where you can switch the transactional mode. So now we switch from the modify to the save phase because sending of a mail should happen in the save phase. So we switch from transactional mode to the save phase and we send the mail using the above cloud release APIs. This is above cloud enabled API for sending out mail. And we are sending out the mail to the customer address, which is maintained in the customer record. Yeah. So I think I touched all the aspects of the demo. Uh, it was a long one. Uh, I think uh, it was also we touched uh, most of the aspects what we showed in the picture. So we had a core BO, we had a Fury UI. And one important aspect of Fiori UI, our Fiori UI is model-driven architecture. It is not freestyle. It is Fiori elements, OData v4 based, completely annotation-driven. If I say complete, I lie, I know. There is, of course, some UI-specific stuff, like uh, showing attachments or adding attachments. These are our aspects. But uh, it will also move to the target architecture. Which we are there because, as I said, we have a long history and we are catching up. It cannot be built over two years, but we are on a very good track. So perfect, uh, Guru. Thank you for this very nice demo. Maybe to wrap this up, what we just saw here, 
We just saw how um, SAP provides the core application, the standard application, the VA01 in, in Fury, um, running here in the public cloud, SAP s public cloud. And Guru just uh, to, uh, has shown us how an um, customer in the s public cloud can use ABAP cloud to extend the standard application. So within embedded Steampunk, we can, um, the customers can now, you can now extend the SAP sales order. And Guru, if you maybe show us um, shortly again the BDEV, the extension BDEV, then we see um, how um, um, the rep business object sales order can be extended via the so-called extension BDEV. And here you can simply add new actions to the sales order, which were shown on the Fury application. You can add new side effects that if um, the action is clicked, the items and the pricing uh, items need to be um, need to be refreshed by the Fury application, and Fury Elements does this automatically just by by indicating this here. And we see that we can derive an event, and we call it here managed event. It's a derived event. Sales order I think um, provides the created sales yes. order created event, and here we derive that we inform in case something happened with the gift card, just in case something happened with the gift card, which is then done in the implementation. And all the things which are required can be then done coming from here in the ABAP implementation using the ABAP cloud, um, um, ABAP for cloud development, um, the restricted ABAP for, for cloud ready applications, and all the APIs which will be provided. For example, the email API, which is provided as a Rio service, which I initially told you that we also provide these capabilities, of course. So thank you, Guru, for this nice demo. We will later see some more demos. Um, but uh, first of all, let's have a look what comes next. Um, Volker will will switch to the um, our slide deck again. So, but uh, don't be worried. There will be uh, um, three more demos we will see. And yeah, where's our screen? There we go. So, but um, before we uh, go to the um, to the outlook and to the further demos from the lab preview. Do we have there maybe certain uh, three to five quick questions you, we, we should answer from, from our um, side? Maybe Guru can help us here also if they are related to the sales order to the Eswahana application development overall. So uh, one question uh, was uh, the uh, handling of the legacy code, all the uh, old user access, like the customer developed for sub MB, uh, M4 45R are still in use and still working, right? Or... Yes. So, well, actually, we, as I said, we really have, have a huge value for our customer investments. So this was one of our prerequisites for us. We cannot rewrite sales order again, or we should not. Then we have a bigger problem with our customer base. So the user exits are processed. But there is a but always. The RAP programming model comes with a clear programming pattern which has to be adhered to because only then you can be cloud ready. So if these rules are kept, which normally can be kept, RAP also offers the mitigation plan how you can move from the non compliant way to a compliant way. So if these rules are kept with minor adoptions, it will be run. But to your answer, the user exits are processed. Okay. And uh, also one comment on YouTube was, the, is it another layer over another layer over another layer or how um, much refactoring and completely redesign was in uh, this application? Was it just, yeah, we built a new layer uh, uh, cost still the old uh, um, BAPI like sales order create or something? Okay, uh, the honest answer is uh, it's other layer uh, over other layer over other layer. Yeah, but there is a justification why it is done like this. So as we said, we want to have our business logic in one place. And this is where the investments has happened over the last 30 years. We have add-ons, we have extensions, we have customer enhancements. So we should keep this. Now, uh, we have a layer internally built even before RAP started in 1990s and 2000s, which is the goal of the Lord. And this is actually our business logic abstraction layer. So this also makes sense. It is there. Now we come with RAP, yeah? So RAP is now, the reason for RAP, why RAP justifies for us is we do not have to explain our customers how to consume our signature because the signature is well-defined from RAP, how to create, how to call action, how to save, and so on. 
So now we as SAP have a big chance to refactor our core, which is also driven by our S4 HANA architecture, because now our outer layer is stable and we are consciously also investing in focused re-engineering because we cannot re-engineer everywhere. We are doing a focused re-engineering on the most important aspects where we can re-modernize our core or modernize our core, which is also driven by our S4 HANA architecture team. Maybe Marcel can also comment on this. Yes, I, I think we are all developers. We all know a little bit of, of software engineering. We all know how to create a facet, how to create reusable APIs. And that was um, actually also done for, for the sales order team or the SD team with multiple business objects that they created the Go layer, the generic object access layer. So an application owned reuse layer. Um, the benefit is you can use this code everywhere. The negative point is you also have to integrate it everywhere by yourself. And now we provide the standard. We provide the standard facet, which is the rep business object. And once you integrate it there, you have to fulfill a certain contract, the consumer and the provider, both sides. And once you did that, you can refactor like hell under, under this facet, but we integrate this facet everywhere and you don't have to take care for this technical coupling to protocols, UI technologies and what comes there. And now, since we have so many new features in RAP and in ABAP Cloud, uh, other things um, on top, we can see that we really see now the benefit. It's not only Fury, it's not only OData with web APIs, but we also have events, for example. So once you have this business object and that's some kind of work, of course, but then you really quickly can see all the benefits that you get and where you have all these integration services in ours. Okay, cool, thank you. And one more question, uh, RAP is a new technology, so it's also new at SAP in the uh, application development. So how was your journey by um, enabling the employees or colleagues to do the RAP de uh, development? Okay, so here, our CTO, Jürgen Miller, already outlined uh, RAP is part of the golden path. So at least I do not have the job to convince the developers do this work. <laughs> this is already taken care by management. But now let me come to the uh, tough part of it. It is new. Yeah, it is syntax is new. How you have to enable is new. So there is a learning phase. And um, as Marcel said, I'm not always neutral. So sometimes I also find it very difficult to find what is the right keyword. It is, uh, it is uh, difficult, but once you know that, but the way we are working is uh, ABAP Cloud or ABAP Platform is a technology team. We have a S4 HANA architecture team who is who are very experienced colleagues and they are the counterparts or, or they talk with ABAP Platform. They do the POCs, evaluations and so on. And then they have a meetings with a center of expertise with architects from LOBs and we act as multipliers of knowledge to team of 10. Yeah, so it means so we have a, from super expert to, to S4 on our architect. From there, we come to COEs and then uh, to the final developers in, in bigger circle. Yeah. So, so the, the, the RAP developer knowledge isn't far, far from, the, uh, from the sky. So you also had to work for it and to uh, yeah, yes. educate and uh, um, all your um, uh, developers. Yes, uh, perfectly explained, Guru. Thank you so much. And maybe one or two sentences from, from the technology or from the rep about cloud side um, is um, we are also, of course, investing in making it easier to, to consume and access the programming model. So first of all, we, for example, have the inside talk, uh, how to consume ABAP Cloud as a cloud uh, as a classic um, ABAP developer. So which explains a little bit, how do I come to such a sales order BO if I'm, uh, I'm busy so far with doing pro applications, for example. And the other thing is we will have a significant um, invest into this consumability aspect. Um, we call that Hello About Cloud. You saw maybe the session on, um, on, on, on the Devtoberfest. And we are um, planning to invest here to make it easier. So for example, to have a landing page so that you see what is possible in, in ABAP Cloud, which scenarios are supported, how, where to find the videos, where to find the documentation from the central entry point, and maybe how to speed up the development of a Fury application while the so-called rep generator, which we know it's not perfect, which is out there, 
we have um, also the this open source project from from Andre, which is uh, currently way better, and we are now challenging Andre to improve the official version. So that um, yeah, let's see what happens with this open source project in future. Now Andre is also in this room; he's laughing. So I'm just just kidding. So we we have the challenge because we want to be as good as this open source um, wizard and to take all the learnings which Andre has from this community into our project and not only for Rap Fury Generator but for all scenario scenarios which we offer in, in our cloud. Cool, thank you. So, do we have a question from my side? So, yeah, that were three to five questions. Thank you so much. And um, then we maybe move forward. And um, yeah, thank you, Guru. And welcome, Volker. So, ABAP Cloud Outlook. So, what we just saw, we go through quickly through the slide because we just saw it. We can expose such a business object, which is very important for transactional applications built by REP. We can uh, use this for via OData integration for point-to-point -point integration. We can create APIs for that, for internal or for external communication. With external, I mean outside of our organization. So, for example, from SAP to customers. We have the business events for remote, for also for side-by-side -side extensibility besides OData, for example. And also local events where you can extend the standard behavior, for example, sending the mail in the gift card scenario, um, which is implemented on stack in ABAP. So the second part for on stack extensibility. We have now in the future, maybe in a bit more far future, also the SAP Fury notifications being integrated into REP. And um, this is because, why not? The changes happen in the REP BO, the transactional changes. And if something is happening there, I want to show the notification in the Sub Fury Launchpad. And therefore, of course, we also want to have an integration here. And just, I think, probably with 2402, we will see that. Um, also, enterprise search, of, it's of course not part of REP. REP is the transactional part of ABAP Cloud, but this is more the, the read-only part. Enterprise search, everybody knows that, is will become also probably part of ABAP Cloud. And um, yeah, let's see that in February. And besides integration scenarios, besides, besides Fury, we of course also have the analytic um, space. Analytic space based on INA, advanced analytics, so real analytics with multidimensional reporting. And here we can do that via SAC, system externally, or I think, Volker, will we see a demo later? Yeah, we will see later a demo, how we can do that also within the system based on Fury um, via multidimensional reporting. We had process integration with events and with OData, but what about data integration? Customers are always asking us that, of course, because it's very important. And if you try to do data integration via process integration, that means bringing or replicating data via OData, that's not a good idea for several reasons, maybe performance, but also the business logic is not relevant. You really want the data. Therefore, we are also investing into this space. So first of all, we have um, the SQL possibility that you can consume data from an ABAP server, like from a database via ODBC, the SQL binding. And we have now an in a replication infrastructure on top that you can use ABAP as a replication source and maybe in the future also as a target. So, but now what does it mean for SAP Fury? And here we can see that the newest features are the tree view. Which were delivered, which was delivered with 2311 in the cloud. So, un unfortunate, unfortunately, not fortunately, unfortunately, not part of the last on premise shipment with 2023. So, yeah, we need to wait nearly two years. Unfortunately, we had uh, the Fury feature showcase app. I think uh, many, many people are were looking forward for that. And uh, we also improved the side effect modeling that you don't have to do that in the Fury application, but this can also be done in the back end in the business object once where the business logic is implemented and supporting all the different Fury applications running on top or whatever comes in future. And now coming to the demo part, we can see um, that um, the tree view evolves. It's not read only anymore. We will see that for the one of the next um, cloud releases and for the next big on-premise release, we will have the tree view also editable. So drag and drop and changing the data. And with the tree view, but also independent of the tree view, we will have the collaborative draft, which means multiple persons can work in parallel on the same document. We all know that from different office products that you can do that. 
um, I just prepared with a colleague um, yesterday, uh, or, uh, last week, I mean, the slides for this uh, for the session. And um, yeah, it's very nice to work, to collaborate on the same document in parallel. And sometimes I just watched how he changes my slides. That was very funny. And um, of course, you can do the same in a Fury application. Not of course, but we will provide this feature. And then Enterprise Search, we just talked about that. And then more advanced things. It's a topic which keeps us busy for some time. That was also the reason why maybe for 2023, not too many features were there because we have some features which are long running, which are very, very complex. And the preview collaborative draft are the, uh, one, uh, some of them. And the other one is that we you can edit multiple business objects in one app, which where you might think, okay, why do I need this? But just assume we have real services and real services are in the future not separate OData services, but they're integrated into the into the host application and they are just just different business objects you can include here. And then, of course, also editing, draft and all that should work. Analytical table is also very important for us. Um, we call it analytical table, but basically it's the above list viewer plus plus in Fury based on OData v4 as a brand new uh, pattern, um, high quality pattern and and yeah, that is something we want to focus on. And we just talked about Fury notifications, WebSockets. WebSockets and Fury notifications are very important for us because they somehow stick also to the things we just started with, which were the asynchronous execution. Local events, the background processing framework, if you have heard about that, uh, are things where we can um, um, execute logic asynchronously. But if you call, uh, execute something asynchronously and change something there, you also need maybe to push a change to the user interface again. And this is done by our web sockets for the app itself, or if it is for the end user and the FLP, the Fury notification. This, these are also big innovations we plan for the next big, big, big shipment. So it's a long forecast, but we will try to make this happen. And now, handing over to Volker to show us some demos. Volker, what have you prepared? Yeah, thank you, Marcel. Thank you, Google. And um, yeah, thanks for the nice introduction. Um, hello, hello, also from my side. Um, and yeah, welcome to this session. And um, yeah, now um, in the position to um, yeah uh, show you the little lab previews, the two things as mentioned by Marcel, um, the editable tree view, as well as the collaborative draft. Um, both um, will be shown now. So let me quickly jump into my slides here. I need to move this away a bit, but I can find the stuff. So we start with the um, editable tree view. I need to refresh the screen, but to make sure that I don't have a timeout. So um, yeah, I said by myself, the editor, uh, the tree view as such, um, showing uh, or offering the capability to um, visualize hierarchical data was already provided with 2311. And now um, the next step is then to have this also um, yeah, in an editable way. And um, as per our demo environment and the, and the examples that we provide, we have added this into our um, travel um, reference scenario and in particular to the um, agency uh, business object. Yeah. So you um, probably know this from the reference scenario, also from our documentation, where we refer to that. Um, we have um, the um, ability to um, edit agency. And um, in here, um, we have the list. Let me click, okay. I need to watch the time a bit. Um, we have the list of agencies, and um, I will just step into one of them and um, go into the edit mode. And here, as always, you know the um, pattern that you have this on top, the ability to um, edit in the object page. Um, and what is new, as mentioned, is the tree view as such. So we have added another entity to this later model. Um, the entity is uh, employees. So assuming that an agency has a set of employees, of course, and they are organized in a hierarchical order. And um, I can yeah, navigate now in, in, this, in this tree, as you can imagine. So that's probably no rocket science. But as you already see here, since we're in edit mode, you can um, also edit now the values. So um, I can just edit um, um, the properties here as um, as regular, so in a, an editable table. But the important aspect comes with the tree feature as such. Yeah? So this means I can now drag and drop. And for instance, I could, you see, they are all in the same um, structure. This means um, every employee reports to the same uh, manager, which is Ulla in this case. Um, but I can also create now a new substructure by just dragging and dropping. So I pack, I'm, I'm dragging now number four underneath number three. 
And this means I'm formally, forming uh, now a new structure, a substructure here. Yeah, and this can also be added um, further. So I can pick number five and sort, and it can also uh, put it here. So this means with this feature, um, yeah, you have now um, uh, via drag and drop the ability to yeah edit this preview. There's also further things planned that you can of course um, also yeah have the uh, kind of um, deleting a substructure and all these things. Um, the basis for this is um, a few annotations that you need, and um, you also need a, um, a specific um, um, hierarchy CDSU like you use to create um, or implement when you um, already uh, defined the uh, read-only tree view. And in the behavior definition, also a set of information is needed, so um, the link and unlink action, for, in, for instance, uh, in order to implement this. Yeah. So, but of course, we also focus here in order to make sure that um, only a small amount of development is needed, and therefore. Yeah, by that, this feature will come to life. And with that, I move on then to the next demo, which is the collaborative draft. Um, also already nicely explained by myself, the purpose and the idea behind. Um, and um, I'm simulating this. First of all, let me just quickly refresh the screen with a little cinema application. So this time it's not a travel application, but it will also come soon then. And the uh, use case here is I'm a, uh, um, I'm a user now. I'm logged in as uh, with my user ID, as you can see, yeah, that's me. And um, I'm, yeah, uh, editing one of the records here. And I would like to invite someone to work collaborative uh, together with me on this instance. And I can do this by pressing this button. So I'm in edit mode. And now I can um, add another user. Before I do that, I need to quickly also refresh that other screen because that other user is actually Marcel. He is also logged in here. Oh, good to know. Thank yeah. You. Exactly. So it's Marcel. He also has the cinema app on his launch pad. And um, I need to make this a little bit smaller here so that you see what I want to show you, and uh, which is actually the fact that um, you see this little notification icon here. So you see there is nothing in here at the moment. And if everything goes well, if I now invite Marcel to join, to work with me together on this um, document, you see that he has received the notification. And this notification sees, uh, says that um, I have invited him to work together with me on this uh, instance. Clicking in here um, brings him now to um, this cinema app as well. And now you see that we both collaboratively work on the same document. This means um, Marcel is currently editing this um, field here. And this means on my screen, this field is now blocked. Yeah? And while Marcel moves on here and changes things, values, the um, corresponding app on my side is automatically refreshed. This also holds true for side effects, for instance. Yeah, so you can see that um, these um, total available seats are calculated out of the um, um, individual number of seats. So if I update this value here, you see it's updated on my screen, but it's all, uh, on Marcel's screen, but also on my screen. And this is a really nice feature. So you can, as yeah, the purpose of this feature is collaboratively work on the same instance, and of course you make sure that um, all the fields and the values. Are correspondingly locked so that um, you're not kind of editing the same value at the same point in time. And with that, I think I move back to Marcel and the slides, right? Thank you, Volker. It's always a pleasure to work with you, especially if I don't have to do anything. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, so what, what comes next? So we had Fury and um, I, I need to click. No, I can click. I yeah, got the clicker at the notebook. Oh, yeah, professional, very professional session. So, yeah, business events. We just talked about that. Um, so, we have many multiple um, features we provided. So, um, with the business events, we support the extensibility. You can extend, for example, the sales orders introducing a new event, or you can use the derived events. So, sales order provide a couple of events. So, you don't have to, for example, find the right body where you can do the race event. You can simply say, I want to be called when the sales order is created in order to inform about um, a gift card scenario. And uh, these are the derived events or the managed events was the syntax for that we just saw in the demo. And um, yeah, of course, all the events, new ones or derived ones, they can be consumed externally, but they can also be consumed internally on stack asynchronously executed. Yeah, um, this was already part of the demo. So we go maybe to the, to the next part. Um, is about this is about analytics and data integration. So here pro we provided um, with 2023 the SAC integration. We also provided um, the analytical extensibility options. And yeah, this goes further with um, data integration, which is planned for February 
And we will also see just in a second the SAP Fury based multi dimensional reporting. Volker is running. Um, thank you again for doing my work. Sorry. <clears throat> and we will see also a lab preview here. Volker, handing over to you just in time. Perfectly. In time, exactly. So, yeah, good. Yeah. So, hi, everybody again. Um, so, this is um, the multi dimensional um, reporting. And for that, I will quickly you a little bit of the data modeling because of course we don't have much time so this little demo um is yeah this an analytics demo is about a short um, and small data model that we have um the basis is um a, a cube which yes yeah okay it is based on um, one of our regular database tables um and as as always with analytical applications you have certain dimensions and measures and um, they are exposed accordingly so you see the dimensions are associated here and the measures are mentioned down here further. And then on top of that, you have a query. And the query defines basically then also then um, the aspects that you have available in the application. And if I now launch the application, how that is the browser window again. And here, I think it has time out, which is not an issue. OK, it is an issue. Once it has loaded, we see then the multidimensional analysis and I can click the go button and then based on this small flight example we see here that um, yeah, flights are listed it is um, summing up the flight price it is counting the total um, total numbers of flights um, as well as um, it, it um, calculates the average occupation rate which is all defined in the query and yeah like you know that from analytical applications you can of course um, now you're also define here what is being shown and how the aggregation is happening. And um, as soon as I remove some of the dimensions, then all the measures are, re are being calculated accordingly. And this is just kind of yeah, inside the system. It is um, um, yeah, the multidimensional analysis in Fiori. So yeah, thank you so much, uh, Falcon. Maybe you, you can stay there for a second. So it's really Fiori based. And of course, we will integrate that uh, further. That's important to know. So it's uh, still INA um, um, based. Um, INA means information access, access protocol, INA, INA, um, um, but um, still we want to have that all together in Fury Elements and Fury and, and bring the transactional and the analytical world, world closer. Thank you so much, Volker. And um, yeah, I think that was it from the demo part. And um, maybe before I summarize what we just discussed is we in this session sometimes mixed the terms RAP and ABAP Cloud. So, and maybe to clarify that just a little bit, RAP is part of ABAP Cloud, but ABAP Cloud is way more. We just saw the big picture, yeah? So RAP is OData, um, Fury, it's it's about um, transaction to application, it's about um, web APIs, it's about business objects. But of course, we can also see that um, a lot of more topics are here. So different protocols like SOAP, RFC, HTTP, the data integration, analytics, that's all not RAP, but still, being part of ABAP Cloud. And that's so important why RAP, we, we um, exposed RAP some years ago as a new way how you should uh, program um, and, and build applications. But now this is more or less substituted by even a bigger shift, which is ABAP Cloud containing the RAP aspects, which we discussed. So if tomorrow someone comes to you and asks you what was nice and what did you learn in the keynote, for example, then maybe three points how you could summarize it is ABAP Cloud is definitely the future for ABAP-based development. That's very important. Um, and as for HANA, so Guru, for example, is broadly adopting these new ABAP Cloud innovations. Yeah, so that's also very important. And enabling you to extend these applications. And there are many, many new innovations planned. You just saw some lab reviews. There comes more and more. So just if you are working on premise, stay tuned for 2025. It's a long time, but there will be much included. And if you are happily working in the cloud, you don't have to wait that long. So, but there will, um, will be many, many new innovations. We are collaborating with Fury. We are collaborating with many other teams and um, to bring this ABAP cloud story forward and to have a seamless integration of all the technologies and best practices, which we have. Having said that, um, first of all, before we come maybe to additional questions, thank you, Volker, so much for the preparation. 
to be honest, I was not so much available in the last days because I had two uh, sick kids at home. But Volker, he uh, prepared all the demos and like always, he's investing so much time and very, very experienced. Thank you, Volker, so much. And also thanking Guru. First applause for Volker and maybe second applause for Guru. And Guru, also thank you so much. You have to know that Guru, he is nearly on all conferences right now, internally, externally, because he's so passionate and he, he's driving that so much. So it's not only that he's part of a keynote session, for example, he's also driving this SAP internally. He's an evangelist for everything we do. And he's also sometimes like very critical, which is good because only we can improve if we have persons which provide also yeah. negative feedback and also positive feedback like we saw today. Thank you, Guru, also for that. And, and I don't know. Thank you to Marcel for taking us through this nice session and doing this very well. I Thanks just I just set the session. Thank you so much. Now that was even also something uh, someone different. So do we have time to discuss further questions or should we close the session? Uh, one question concerning the demo of Guru was um, the performance of the rub object. Um, compared uh, to the classical GUI one, the, is there any benefit? Is it slower? Is it faster? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I answered. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are working on it. Uh, but on the one aspect where, uh, to be very honest, we were even critical we thought it is bad or we would be it would be bad but as i said previously layers of our layers we were afraid but it is definitely not bad the demo which i did i do not know whether you felt a lack it is real it is uh, so we the customers are using our fury application uh, so it is fitting perfectly to cloud customers i would say because they typically have five items in the order or something uh, we have to see when it becomes thousand line items or something. Yeah. So it is in our track. Uh, we are working on it. Uh, yeah. But definitely not too bad. I look back to okay. say it's not usable or something. It was a live demo. Yeah. And uh, the biggest feedback was uh, about the collaborative draft. Everybody wants the collaborative draft. And on prem, twenty twenty five. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's on Prem 2025. It's unfortunately a very, very, very complex topic because you, you can assume if we have multiple users working on the same document coming on to security questions, then uh, with WebSockets, may, you, you didn't see that, but under the hood, there are WebSockets informing all the other clients of the other, of other users. So that's a very, very, very complex topic. Not for you as a developer. I guess we need three statements. We need the share action. We need uh, not with draft, but with collaborative draft and projection and BO level. That's it. You don't have to do anything on top. That's everything you need to do in order to make this collaborative draft running. So easy for you, hard for us, a really tough job for us. So unfortunately, the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. But which brings us to maybe the last slide here. If you want to learn more about our cloud, also uh, links to rep and everything which we need here. Just last week, we um, published the ABAP official ABAP Cloud documentation, the real documentation. And um, why we need ABAP Cloud, that's uh, the community link and the ABAP Cloud roadmap. So we have just one roadmap for all topics which are of part of ABAP Cloud. And ABAP Cloud is now the umbrella around all these different technologies. And you don't have to look for the different organizations which we have in our um, organization, sub-organizations, uh, but there's one central place covering everything. Thank you. So this was it. Thank you for the organization. Almost perfect time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for having us here. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Is someone online? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So um, this was the keynote. Um, next session is actually now we're going to split into channel one and channel two. And uh, channel one, actually, we now have uh, Sasha Wächter with to talk about RAP and testing. And in channel, which actually is in German. So if you are not fluent in German or you are an English speaker or you don't have any interest in uh, uh, RAP for some reasons, 
We have channel two, which is actually going to start with Unal and with Thomas talking about the future of RTT in Eclipse. Or, uh, honestly, they actually skipped the name Eclipse, so maybe it's also about VS Code. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. <laughs> Uh, but there's a channel, uh, a channel two actually a session in English with Thomas and Ms. Unan about IDT development and what's actually coming new and what they're actually doing there. So every English speaker, you can switch to channel two. The Germans want, bleibt einfach da. <laughs>